The internet is a great tool for connecting different people from different parts of the world from different communities. In my case, my favorite people are metal people. They're some of the best friends I've ever had, and we tend to have a lot in common. So I'd like to talk about the positive impact of the internet on the metal community, as it's definitely had a great effect on me. How I got into metal actually was via the internet. The music I was used to hearing when I was 14 was radio rock and alternative. After a while, it started to sound the same and I realized it had no balls. But when iTunes added metal as a subgenre for their store in 2009, that was my gateway. Around Christmas time, they had a sale called None More Black, where they had albums by Dark Throne, Burza, Mayhem, Dissection, among others. My first underground metal album was Dark Throne's A Blaze in the Northern Sky. There was a snowstorm in Philly that same night I bought that album. So, in the shadow of the horns blasted through my headphones as I tread through knee-deep snow to a family friend's Christmas party. My introduction to black metal couldn't have been more perfect. Two weeks later, my stepmom hooked me up with a friend from college. We became pen pals, and he led me on the right path to a force known as metal. Books and albums were recommended, as well as labels and websites. The things I know about metal stem from those suggestions, and I owe nothing but gratitude to him for starting me off. Where I grew up, the Bible was law, long hair was basically evil, people thought way behind the times and encouraged my classmates to do the same. Oh, and if it wasn't country, it wasn't music. <laughs> so for the longest time, I was the only person in my town who listened to metal. Sure, I had my share of isolation and shit talk, but that didn't bother me after a while. If they were going to be judgmental for my music, then they weren't worth the time of day. I used metal as my escape for everything. It was the number one thing that interested me. Even if it was only through email, my pen pal was an ally. Knowing him allowed me to give no shits about what the naysayers said, because I knew that eventually, I'd meet other headbangers. There were no music stores in my town, and concert venues were many hours away from me, but I knew that there was a whole world of metal waiting for me when I could find a way to make the shows. Maybe if I were born at an earlier time, without internet, I still could have gotten into metal, but that would have required more digging. One of the books my pen pal showed me was Choosing Death, The Improbable History of Death Metal and Grindcore. Obviously, this was a good introduction to the music, but reading about the tape trading scene of the 1980s and 90s was fascinating. Bands and fans communicate with a more personal touch, though it costs more time and money with postage. It made me feel lucky to have the internet to discover bands. Back then, zines were a huge source to how people found new music. With the internet, there are all sorts of websites, news sources, online personalities, and social media groups. Now people are able to promote bands they like as well as their own. Tours can be advertised simpler, and the audience can communicate with the musicians a little easier. They can talk to people who are into what they are into. And if they're young and are in a situation like I was, it would give them hope that there are people out there for them. For a lot of years, I've avoided social media as much as I could, and in a lot of ways still do. But even as someone who was into metal for a bunch of years, I wasn't fully aware of the amount of pages, groups, and online circles for metal there were. Regardless, I started doing videos as a way of spreading my knowledge and love for metal. Over time, my videos seemed to resonate with lots of people. I would get recognition from bands I've talked about, as well as messages and gifts from viewers. Some of these viewers were in their teens, and I happened to get them into metal. It's an honor. <laughs> but I like to think that even for old timers, I can still teach them something or entertain them. A lot of them say that I remind them of how they were when they were younger, so internet videos like mine are a medium for how information and entertainment influence a percentage of the metal community. In my case, I'm celebrating metal. It's been my escape for a lot of years, so in a way I'm giving back to it. Giving back is made simpler when I can email a link to a guitarist or if a band finds one of my videos by accident. Of course, totally investing yourself into friends online and having no one to talk to in person isn't good for you. Nothing beats face-to-face -face interaction. Being able to sit on the couch and listen to a record with a friend is better than typing up emails about records, but if that's all you have, then use those messages to your advantage. When I was 18, Carcass and Obituary were playing Raleigh, so I witnessed the glory of giants at my first death metal show. Everyone I talked to that night made sure that I stage dived, and you know what? That was years ago, and I still talk to people that I met that night. It was amazing. From the fans' perspective, it's easier to buy merch and albums. Bands don't have to send VHS tapes of behind-the-scenes studio footage, they can just upload them to reach more people. Opinions and polls can take place so the musicians can see what the fans want. 
That's not to say that the internet has made every aspect empirically better. Since everybody wants something for nothing and doesn't want to pay for music, it's harder for bands to make money and many of them go in serious debt. But that's a topic for another time. Some of the things I've mentioned haven't just affected the metal scene, but music as a whole. So a lot of it isn't special to just metal. But with such an underground culture like this, I can dig up the most obscure bands from India with a cell phone in a matter of seconds. The convenient part is that I don't have to send letters or read magazines to find any of it. With it being hard to sell albums, if you put out a song or video online, it'll get plenty of exposure if it's good enough. If a band has enough buzz around it, they can try crowdfunding an album or tour. They no longer have to hold their hands out to a label for support. It can be difficult to connect to people sometimes if they don't share the same interests as you. I remember having to chase people down the street if I saw them wearing a Morbid Angel shirt just so that I could talk to them. But there are people out there for everybody. If you know how to push the right buttons and where to look, you can make some new contacts. Festivals can be organized, concert tickets can be bought, interviews can be conducted, and even those rare demos you've always wanted to hear can be found in digital format. I'm personally happy that I can buy from the Peaceville online store, instead of having to mail back a catalog sheet, hoping that my international letter and money won't get lost in the mail. Thankfully, a lot of things I've been able to do, people I've gotten to meet, and the albums I've heard are all thanks to the internet. Grind on.